Hello guys, my name is Vijay. In this session, let us see few data view interview questions. I am planning to create few series of videos on the same. The first question is what is data view and why we have to use it. So this is the definition that I copied from MuleSoft documentation. It's a programming language designed by MuleSoft itself for accessing and transforming the, the data that travels through a Mule application. So we know that we use data view to transform the data from one format to another format uh, and also to, to validate the data. Also you can log the data from data view or you can also call another flow from data view and also you can raise an error from the data view. So data view is the core component of Mule 4 and we, we, we write lot of data view scripts wherever is required. So that's all about uh, what is data view what is the latest version available for data view so by the time I am creating this video the latest version of data view is 2.4 list out frequently used data view in built functions so interviewer might ask you uh, uh, based upon your experience right they might ask you uh, what are all the functions that you have uh, worked in in the real-time projects Okay, you can list out the data view functions that, that you have worked on. So I have listed few uh, data view inbuilt functions and these are the functions that we use uh, very uh, usually, right, in the real-time project. So that, that is what I have listed here. And remember one thing that based upon your response, interviewer might ask you questions from the same. Okay, if you, if you say that, okay, these are all the functions that I have worked, so expect some some more questions on the same functions from the interviewer. The fourth question is how can we invoke or call flows from data view? So we can use lookup function but only constraint is that you can only call private flow but not the subflow. Okay, you can only call the private flow but not the subflow. So I have provided the link here. We'll see the demo on the same. Let's go ahead with the next question how to access a property in data view so we can use p function by using p function we can uh, we can refer a, a property file property that is uh, defined in the property file so we'll also see a demo on the same let me go ahead with the demo for uh, the previous question and the and this question i have created a, a mule application and uh, in that uh, we have three flows one is a parent flow the other is a child flow that is private flow and this is the subflow I hope you know the differences between private flow and subflow now this application is already deployed and also uh, in global config I have uh, referred this particular config.ml file in the configuration properties now if you go through the transform message right this is how the uh, transform is looking like or DW is looking like greeting and the mapping and response and the corresponding mapping now if you see lookup function right let's see a bit on the lookup function so lookup function uh, so it will have three arguments flow name, payload and timeout in milliseconds. So this is the optional one. You can only mention flow name and the payload. Payload is nothing but whatever the payload that you want to send as an input to the to this particular flow. Okay. And as mentioned here, right, note that lookup function does not support calling subflows. And you can also read the warning over here. Let me go back to the demo. So I, I am referring child hyphen private flow that is this one which is a private flow and the payload that I'm that I would like to send it send to the private flow okay now let me send the request so we got a successful response that is hello and my name so because I in the set payload right I have configured payload dot greeting uh, I, I concatenated with my name okay that's why you see the greeting as hello Vijay and response as successfully greeted uh, that is what I have uh, 
configured in the property file status dot success equal to successfully greeted now let's say if i point to the subflow right if i point to the uh, subflow subflow let me copy the subflow name and put it here so let's wait till it, it gets deployed so we'll see an error now uh, because uh, uh, calling using lookup function right we cannot call subflow we can only call private flow let me clear this now let me send the request so you see the response is could not greet because an error has occurred and the control has come to this particular uh, error handler and within this transform message you could see that p of status dot error so status dot er error is nothing but could not greet this is the response now this way you can you can uh, refer the uh, property in the data view or you can access a property which you have defined in configuration properties using p function in the data view so we have covered question number four and five with this demo now let me go back so how to sort an array so i'll go ahead with the demo so this is the array now if you observe right this is not in the in the uh, it's shuffled actually uh, there are elements from 1 to 10 but they are not in a proper order so in order to shuffle it right or sort it right how, how can we sort it is the question now payload so when i when i enter payload right it has printed the outcome as is as input now order by so you have to use order by function to sort the input array now you see uh, the outcome is in sequence in the ascending order 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so this will be in the ascending order by default now sort the array in descending order so in order to uh, sort the same array in the descending order right what you can do uh, you can put minus 1 to 0 so what this will do okay so th this this actually um, it will start printing uh, your output in the in a reverse order okay so minus 1 is for the last index to the first index after the sorting okay so after sorting this particular uh, thing we are applying on the array so this way you can you can sort the array in the descending order okay so uh, yeah so that way we have covered this question as well how to sort an array in the descending order now find the smallest and greatest number in an array so this is uh, very easy right like now when you when you sort the array uh, simply by using order by function right it will automatically um, I mean displays the output in an ascending order right now in order to uh, get the smallest number you can you can do like this like of zero that means whatever is the value that is there in the zeroth index that is nothing but the smallest number and you can have minus one here so that it will fetch the number that is there in the last index after the sorting okay that is nothing but the 10 here okay so this way we can find out the smallest number and the greatest number uh, within a given array now the la the next question is filter out even and odd numbers now what I have to do I have to filter out so payload uh, okay let me first try to print the even numbers so item is nothing but uh, each and every number here okay so item and we can use mod function Two. So, if mod item mod two is equal to zero, right? That means it's an even number. Zero. So these are the even numbers in the given array. Two, four, eight. Okay. Uh, this looks. Uh, the outcome is not in a uh, sorted order, but yeah. Two, four, eight, six, ten. These are the even numbers. Okay. So. Yeah. 
So this, these are the even numbers and if you put not equal to 0, that means these are the odd numbers, 1, 3, 9, 5, 7. Okay, this is how you, uh, you can uh, filter out the even numbers or odd numbers in a given array. Okay, let's go back to the slideshow. So find the smallest and greatest number in an array. So th this we have discussed and uh, yeah, filter out even and odd numbers from an array. Okay, I have taken 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and uh, this is what I have shown you in the demo. Now we have missed one question that is how to print the current date. So, uh, yeah. So in order to print the current date timestamp, right, you can use now function. Okay, but this has time as well. Now, in order to fetch only date from this, right, you can use as date. Okay, this will by default show the date in this format. If you want to uh, display the same date in a different format, right, you can use this uh, this particular uh, uh, format actually. You can use format, you can format it. And uh, this is for year. Uh, I have put slashes, that's why you could see slash year, month and the day. So I hope uh, you understood how to extract the date. Okay. So with this, uh, we are done with this video. I'll come up with a few more questions in the next video. Thank you so much.